Our next presenter is Lena Antuinas from the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. She'll be presenting intra-amniotic administration of amniotic fluid stem cell extracellular vesicles regulates rat fetal hypoplastic lungs as revealed by a single nucleus RNA sequencing. Thank you. Chairpersons, ladies and gentlemen, it is well established that the primary determinant for poor outcomes in babies with CDH is the severity of pulmonary hypoplasia and severity of pulmonary vascular remodeling. To address this, our team has published our latest findings on the use of extracellular vesicles from amniotic fluid stem cells as a regenerative medicine approach to reversing fetal pulmonary hypoplasia. Extracellular vesicles, or EVs, are nanoparticles that are secreted by all cells and mediate intracellular communication. We showed that administration of AFSC EVs to fetal hypoplastic lungs promotes matura maturation by driving SOX9 progenitor cell differentiation and by rescuing surfactant protein C levels. We attributed these effects to the cargo contents of the EVs, namely the microRNAs that we found were abundant and involved in lung development. We also fluorescently labeled these EVs and administered them in vivo and found presence of fluorescent label inside the EVs as well as the fetal lungs. The aims of the present study were to test the lung regenerative ability of the EVs administered in vivo and to determine cell type specific effects. We used CKIT positive amniotic fluid stem cells, grew them in culture, collected condition medium, and used ultracentrifugation in order to pellet out the EVs. We characterized these EVs for size, double lipid membrane morphology, and expression of canonical EV markers. We used the well-established nitrofin model, whereby CDH is induced with oral gavage of nitrofin at E9.5. Uh, those receiving olive oil served as control. At E18.5, we performed intraamniotic injections with 100 microliters of either saline or AFSC EVs. We chose this time point as it um, is the time where fetal breathing movements are at the highest rate based on the premise that the fetuses would inhale the EVs. Then at E21.5, we harvested samples from control plus saline, CDH plus saline, and CDH plus AFSC EVs. We performed histology and PCR analysis. On histology, we found that as expected, CDH lungs had a thickened parenchyme and a uh, disruption in the architecture of the lung, quantified here by the mean linear intercept. <laughs> AFSC EV administration reverted this phenotype back to control levels. On the gene expression front, the lung maturation markers shown here that were downregulated in CDH plus saline lungs were rescued back to control levels with the administration of the EVs. Next, to determine the cell type specific effects, we took uh, two control plus saline, three CDH plus saline, and three CDH plus AFSC EVs. We used the 10x genomic sequencing platform and obtained 5.7 billion reads from approximately 300,000 nuclei. We performed proper quality control measures and generated this UMAP. Every dot on this map represents a nucleus, and its location tells us about its relative gene expression. When we split the UMAP by condition, we found a striking difference in the presence and the pattern of the clusters, namely the ones hi highlighted here did not exist in the controlled plus saline lungs and were completely abated once we administered the EVs. So what are these clusters? We looked further at the highly expressed genes and we found presence uh, or the high expression of macrophage identity markers as well as function and uh, inflammatory processes. Now, it's important to note that we performed the same sham surgery in the control experiments, but we did not see the same effect. And our AFSC EVs were administered to CDH pups. We next look at, looked at other differential gene expression. Here I'm showing six inflammatory markers that are highly upregulated in the CDH plus saline lungs. This was regardless of the cell type that we looked at. It's really remarkable that the AFSC EVs were able to downregulate these inflammatory genes. We then split by major subtype and found presence of specialized cells like ciliated epithelial cells, but we also found clusters that were only in the CDH plus saline lungs. So the, here I'm showing the inflamed AT2 cells, but also inflamed fibroblasts in the mesenchymal subtypes. Here we found mesothelial cells and uh, parasites as well. 
And lastly, looking at the endothelial subtypes, uh, what I hope you can appreciate again is that the AFSCEV treated CDH lungs had a profile that was more similar to control and saline versus the CDH plus saline. We looked at gene set enrichment analysis of uh, the highly expressed genes, and we noticed that in the CDH plus saline lungs, uh, we had upregulation of inflammatory response as well as cell death. Uh, whereas when we administered the EVs, pathways such as uh, lung development, lung morphogenesis, as well as vasculature development were highly upregulated. So in conclusion, we uh, showed that CDH lungs have a population level shift in all main cell types with a marked inflammatory signature. AFSCEV administration abates the inflammatory status of fetal hypoplastic lungs via multilineage immunomodulation. I'd like to thank the rest of the lab members, our funding sources, and you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Hi, Jesse Fresnack, St. Louis Children's Hospital. Um, congratulations on some beautiful work. Um, I was curious if you looked at any longer term time points beyond E21.5, and if so, what, what you found as far as the persistence of these amniotic fluid EVs uh, or the implications for longer term outcomes. Uh, sorry, did you hear, you're asking about longer time points? Yeah, beyond E21.5. Uh, so that's actually the last day of gestation, and we know that this is a non-surviving model, so um, we're really don't, don't want them to give birth because uh, unless we perform ventilation, they will not survive. So we're moving on to larger animal models in order to answer that question. Uh, we're working with the rabbit as well as the, the lamb to test more the safety and the feasibility of this therapy. So I uh, hope, hope to have more answers soon. Perfect. Hi, Kevin Lally from Houston. Um, nice work, it's, it's ongoing work from uh, Dr. Zanny's lab, but um, this is one of the early observations of a pro-inflammatory state existing in the fetus and CDH, and it's an important observation because it leads to questions about cause as well as in, uh, in, in modulating this in, in utero, but do you think that this is a, a CDH-specific thing? Because a big issue with this particular model is a teratogenic model, and is it a nitrofen-induced inflammatory state? <clears throat> Thank you so much for the question. This was absolutely the first thing we asked ourselves. We were wondering if this is only a rat-specific effect. So we are looking at autopsy samples right now, and we have preliminary data that suggests that also macrophages in fetal CDH um, lungs are also upregulated. We, we know that uh, just at the, at the moment of birth, there was a paper doc by Dr. Uh, Tipi Magenzi that also showed that there is upregulation of cytokines, so this is very interesting. But with our data, what we can leverage is the, um, the interplay between the different cell types, and we think that this is at the core of the phenotype that we're observing in the rat, but also in, in the humans. Jason Robertson, Cleveland Clinic. Uh, wanted to congratulate you on some very impressive work, and I was hoping you could comment on your decision to use uh, single cell uh, nuclei sequencing as opposed to whole cell sequencing when you yeah. might capture more of the transcriptome? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, this was in, the, in our study design. We needed to screen our samples. So as you can appreciate, I mean, it's very expensive to perform single cell or single nuclei sequencing. Uh, but we basically chose the, the best and then uh, the best control, the worst CDH, and then the best that was treated with AFSC EVs. This gave us the ability to, to sequence eight samples with, as I said, 300,000 nuclei. But in order to do that, we had to bank them, test them, and then choose them. But given all of this, we've been uh, analyzing in a much larger cohort that we didn't sequence just to make sure that we're not actually seeing you know, only the effects of these three. We have a, vir a question from our virtual audience. Hi, everyone. We have a question from Dr. Pokal. Um, looking at the histology, did you really see the addition of alveoli or rather an expansion or thickening of the tissue? I didn't catch that, I'm sorry. Sure, I'll repeat it. Uh, looking at the histology, did you really see uh, addition of alveoli or rather an expansion or thickening of the tissue? Yeah, so we uh, did two measures. Uh, I didn't show the other one. We performed radial alveolar counting 
And also on that measure, we saw that there was a decrease in the uh, uh, number of air spaces or the density, which was, of course, restored back to control levels. This was data um, I didn't include in the, in, the, in the slides. But yes, we do have the data that shows that also alveolar ar architecture is uh, restored. OK, we'll take the last two questions okay. first. Um, Daryl Cass, Cleveland Clinic. This just, again, congratulations. This is tremendous work. I guess my general question is, what's next? Um, can this be recapitulated in a large animal surgical model, perhaps, where you might even be able to see these effects ameliorating the, uh, the phenotype of the animal after birth, where you can resuscitate and, and look at the physiologic effects of CDH? Yes, thank you so much. Thanks for your question. Uh, we are now... Um, starting the rabbit model, which is a surgical model. Of course, that doesn't rely on the nitrofen, so we'll be able to tease out the effect of compression through CDH. Uh, but our, our main focus is on the LAM model because uh, that'll allow us to actually give it intratracheally, which is potentially ultimately the way that we would translate this research. So um, we are using the LAM model in order, to do um, in order to do dosing as well as to understand which cell types are targeted by the EVs. We do this with tracking experiments um, and more on the transcriptional level to understand what genes are being affected and uh, how the vasculature will be also affected. So that's our next step. Thank you. And one final question, please. Thanks. Laura Galganti from Cincinnati Children's. I was curious, based on your previous research, what you found in the EVs that you're hypothesizing is contributing to this? Yeah, it's, it's been a question for us from the beginning. What makes this work? So uh, we've performed RNA sequencing as well as proteomics analysis on the EVs. In our paper in Science Translational Medicine, we uh, actually looked at the proteomics analysis in more depth and didn't really find something that was relevant to lung development. Um, but when we performed the RNA sequencing analysis, we found uh, many different species of RNA that were different. Uh, between, we had a control group that was um, bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells. And what we found was that the most differential um, RNA species were microRNAs. So in that paper, we showed MIR uh, 17 to 92 to be very critical for this phenotype. And actually, when you knock out that cluster, you have bilateral pulmonary hypoplasia. Um, in another paper we just published that's coming out in the Blue Journal hopefully soon, uh, we did some antagomere analysis to sort of knock down the, 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 the content of MIR-17 and 20 in the EVs, and we did not see a, a, the same effect. So we're starting to hone in on which microRNAs are important, but it's like giving a cocktail. So it's not just going to be one microRNA that does the trick. It'll be maybe a combination of them, and uh, that's what we think for now. Thank you, great work. Thank you.